All right, everyone, it finally happened. I got a turbo molecular pump. And in this video, I'm going to build a high vacuum system with this and probably some vacuum tubes. Joni, what is a turbo molecular pump? Why do we need one? And what do we even mean with high vacuum? These are some fantastic questions, so let's explain them really quickly before I start building stuff. In the past I made quite a few videos about building vacuum tubes and to pull the vacuum I used a two-stage rotary vein pump that you can quite easily get online. This pump is good for low and medium vacuum, however it quite literally sucks at creating a high vacuum. I know, I know, this joke sucks. Ha, gotcha. Either way, this pump pretty much works how you expect the pump to work. The gas gets taken in on one side, gets compressed and then expelled on the other side. And this works wonderfully if you're pumping a fluid. However, as you go lower and lower in pressure and create a higher vacuum, your gas will act less like a fluid. And at a certain vacuum pressure, the gas molecules in your vacuum chamber will just bounce around like ping pong balls and they will not be affected by any conventional pump you're connecting this to. If you want your ping pong ball to go in a certain direction, you just have to smack it really hard. And this is exactly what the turbo molecular pump is doing. This pump has a very wide opening leading to several stages of rapidly spinning blades. And when these bouncing around gas molecules hit these blades, they basically get smacked so hard that they get forced into the pump and get pumped out of the chamber. However, this only works if your gas is already not behaving like a fluid anymore. So at the output you still need a conventional pump like a rotary vein pump. Alright, this was a very short and simplified explanation and I could probably go into much more detail and explain more terminology, but I guess I will do this in a future video or something. Because in this video I just want to go over building all of this. If you know that these turbo molecular pumps are not exactly cheap, you might ask how did I get this? And I actually got this gifted from Sally and I'm going to link their social media down in the description. So thanks very much for this turbo pump. I will have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> the turbo pump is controlled by this driver and at least for this version it's very easy to control the turbo pump. I'm not sure how this is with the modern system if they need like digital input or whatever but this one is actually very easy to use. For controlling and monitoring, I made myself a simple control panel and that's connected to the turbo pump driver with this connector. I forgot what type of connector this is, but I just got like an adapter where I can screw in the wires. And I connected the power supply with a fuse and then I have one voltmeter for the turbo pump so it gives out a voltage between 0 and 10 volts for the pump speed and here I have a switch to turn the turbo pump on and off and this voltmeter is for the vacuum gauge but I will get back to that when I connect this to the rest of the system. The power supply is a little bit large that's I think 400 watts but the pump needs 70 to 80 volts. I think the pump just needs under 100 watts or something like that. Couldn't really find a smaller one, so I just got like a 400 watt power supply for that. So the pump opening is quite large and I need an adapter to attach stuff like this T piece right there. And I thought that's a great opportunity to get an adapter CNC machined. So I reached out to JLC CNC and they made an adapter for me and everything fits perfectly on here. And then I can attach the other pieces right there. I'm also using the CVS driver to supply the X-ray tube with high voltage and the PCB is from JLC PCB, which together with JLC CNC is the sponsor of this video. Order your PCBs from JLC PCB effortlessly. Upload your GABA files to get an instant quote and order in minutes. 
It's easy as online shopping. Get one to eight layer PCBs for just two dollars. The efficient large scale production at JLC PCB is reducing costs and bringing you unbeatable prices. And the full in-house production with strict quality control ensures stable quality with a rapid turnaround of just 24 hours. Don't miss JLC PCB 6 layer PCB special. Get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality 6 layer PCBs. Plus a 2 micron electroless nickel immersion gold finish and no engineering fees for wire and pad technology. On top of that JLC PCB's Black Friday sale is now live. Every user can get up to $650 in coupons to spend on PCBs, 3D printing, CNC machining, mechatronic parts, stencils and all your project needs. Unlock your savings at JLC, the one-stop manufacturing platform. Click the link below to start saving. However, between the adapter and the pump I need a sealing ring and this is that. And that's going to go on here. And the adapter like this. And this is going to get clamped down with these clamps right here. And they will attach all the way around several of them to clamp this down. All right, I've put almost everything together and I'm almost ready for testing. I just have to attach the cap right here. I'm going to attach a hose here and then attach the vacuum tubes right there. But for testing, I just need to close this up. There are certainly more complicated vacuum systems out there. If you want to see how, it's, how it should be done, you should check out Signal Ditch. Uh, they actually made a very complicated arrangement with valves so you can attach your vacuum tubes and swap them and stuff like that while the pump is running because yeah, it's a bit complicated if I do it like that. But let's put that here. So there's a ceiling ring right there, then the cap and then this clamp. This is the vacuum gauge, that's a MKS901P and someone in the comments suggested that, so thank you very much for that. It doesn't reach as low of a pressure as this pump can reach, but for now it's fine. And if I need to read any lower, I need to spend a lot more money. So I will have that for now and that's fine. If you want to support me to buy like expensive equipment like this for videos, then I do have the super thanks donation things turned on and I would be very grateful for the support. Right now I'm kind of lazy and supplying the pressure gauge with a 9 volt battery and it's just connected to one of these gauges and it's just showing a voltage but I can roughly see what pressure it's at and that's enough for now. Okay to be real with you I already tested all of this uh, and didn't film it because you can only see the gauge moving and there's not much to see anyway. But now I can go move to the next step and I mentioned in the beginning I want to pump down some vacuum tubes with this system and I made an x-ray tube and this is a little bit better version than what I made years ago. And I think I'm just going to put this on the pump and leave this on there and not seal it off yet. The high vacuum pump should be able to just pump down to the, to the correct pressure and I should be able to produce x-rays, no problem. And I don't have to seal it off and run the getter yet and stuff. So I think I'm just going to put this on there and experiment around what I can actually do on the pump. This is actually a very good benefit of this that I don't have to make a tube and seal it off, run the getter and then find out something is wrong. I can technically make something that I can test on the system 
while it's pumping down, so that's very good. Looking at this, I actually remembered the first vacuum tube videos that I made and I was just basically just messing around and had like very cheap equipment and very cheap plastic hosing and stuff. And now I have this, this is a huge improvement and I'm really proud and really glad that I have this now. However, there is still a lot that I have to improve. Someone was actually giving me a hard time about cleaning these vacuum tubes and I flushed them with ethanol and acetone and stuff, but you really need to clean them for them to last really long. And yeah, I have to do this for future builds and stuff and clean them properly, like really clean. And I actually have to build an oven for these vacuum tubes because they basically have to be baked at vacuum. And uh, I have to do this as well for like the impurities and the absorbed gases on the surfaces to actually desorb and get pumped out. And like that's, that's also a thing I need to work on. So yeah, that's still a lot. And then I'm hopefully able to build some tubes that actually last a long time and are comparable to consumer vacuum tubes. I've now attached the X-ray tube to my vacuum system and I'm going to put some high voltage on there, put the filament current on and slowly turn up the filament current and I'm going to use my radia code to detect the x-rays and then just see how well the tube gets evacuated and how well the vacuum system works and then I'm pretty happy with that if that works. And after pumping down the tube for a while I put some high voltage on it and slowly increased the filament current which successfully resulted in some x-rays coming from the tube. I also put an x-ray intensifying screen in front of the tube, but I realized to see anything I would need to do a long exposure. But I don't want to do this because producing uncontrolled x-rays just to light up the screen is a little bit stupid and dangerous. Alright guys, I know this was maybe a little bit anticlimactic at the end. Uh, I just thought the x-ray tube was an easy build to experiment around with the high vacuum system. But the bottom line is next time or in the future, I will make more videos about vacuum tubes and um, yeah, use this system for trials, for example. I, I know you guys are very excited about that and that's a bit safer and I can show a bit more experiment around on video and stuff. And yeah, if you don't want to miss that, subscribe and until next time.